Hi and welcome to a new video. In this one we're going to show you how you can improve your Django forms and as an example we're going to show you how you can convert a form that looks like this into something that looks like this. And so to demonstrate it if we go inside our admin there are no posts currently so if we were to just create a demo one right now and we'll change the date, select an author and an editor and submit. It submits the form. Now if we go back into the admin and refresh this now we can see we have that submitted instance in our admin. So without further ado let's jump in. So what we want to achieve is basically to make this form look a lot better and maybe to handle it better as well. So using a model form is great but sometimes it doesn't give you as much flexibility or customization so for that reason we want to check out a third-party library for Django which is Django Crispy Forms. So if we search for Django Crispy Forms, then on the first page of Google, we get a couple of links. So I'm going to open the first one here, which is the forms have never been this crispy. And then it takes you to the read the docs page where you can see all about this. And so if we click on installation, then you can see here, all we have to do is say pip install Django Crispy Forms. So inside our project terminal, I'm going to do that. I'm going to copy that. So we'll say pip install Django Crispy Forms. And now we have Django Crispy Forms installed. So what we can do straight from there is we can say pip freeze into our requirements.txt. So we can see all of the packages installed. And then we can run the server again. And so let's check out what else we need to do when we install it. Well, first we need to add crispy forms to our installed apps. So inside our settings, if we scroll down to installed apps, we would put crispy forms right there. And then we would also need to specify a template pack. And that's basically all about the styling. So you can specify it as uniform, bootstrap three, bootstrap or bootstrap four. So I'm going to specify mine as bootstrap four. So just below the installed apps, I'll specify the crispy template pack as bootstrap four, just like that. And now we're actually all good to go. So immediately what we can do is jump back into Sublime Text and go to default form.html. So here we're rendering out the form inside the body. And that's really all that we needed to show this form that's displaying here. But what we can actually do is we can say display the form dot as p, which means as paragraph, and then that will display it differently. So now you can see it looks like this, which is already a little bit better. But now because we have crispy forms installed, we can just say load crispy forms tags like this with the curly braces and then the percentage sign. Then here we can get rid of the dot as p and then pipe crispy. So that is now applying the crispy forms templates to our form. Now if we refresh this, now we can see it changed a little bit. Although we don't have any styling on it at the moment. So what we want to do is actually get bootstrap into our HTML. So we're going to say, we're going to just search here for bootstrap for CDN. And here if we go to the introduction, we can copy the CSS link. So we'll just copy that and we'll paste that into the head just like that. And so let's just go back there Then we can copy the JS as well. And we'll put that below the form just like that. So now we've got bootstrap four. So now let's refresh the page and see what that looks like. Well, now we can see it looks a whole lot different. The styling was applied and because we specified bootstrap 4 as our template pack it's obviously gone and applied those stylings but now it's probably a bit too big so what we're going to do is just add some more styling to this so let's start with adding a container so we'll say div of class container and then we'll add a row and then here we'll add a column and here we'll just say column small three and then we'll just say offset small three and then we'll just cut our form and put that inside there 
and refresh this and now we can see the form is a little bit smaller probably looks a lot better and so now we can just add in a title for that so we'll just come inside there and just add an h1 tag and we'll just say create a post and now we have that title showing so now everything looks a little bit better and now we can actually get started with working on our forms so let's just go back to forms.py and create a completely new form here so we'll say class post form and it's going to inherit from forms.form not the model form so this is slightly different and it's a little bit more customizable so here what we need to do is we basically need to define the fields that are going to show on the form exactly like we did here except now these fields need to be a bit more explicit so we'll start with the title and the title is a character field so we say forms dot character field and we don't need to specify the maximum length because this this isn't a model so then we'll just continue adding the fields so it would be a character field for content even though in our models it's a text field we can change it to be a text field in a second then we can just add the publish date and that would be the forms dot date field or date time field either one and then the author and here we'll use a multiple choice field and the reason is because it's a foreign key so we're specifying that we can select multiple uh, or select from multiple options so here we'll just copy that and paste it again and we'll specify it as the editor and then the last one is draft which will say forms dot boolean field so now let's take this post form and go back into our views and we'll comment out that form and replace it so we'll say the form equals to the post form and we'll just need to import that so we're importing the post form and we're saying it takes in a request dot post or none and now let's go back and see what that looks like so now we can see it looks a little bit different the content field has shrunk a little bit because it's now being told it's a character field not a content not a text area or text input so we want to start changing that and this is why you would want to use the forms.form because now we can actually start specifying this so what we're going to do is now take a look at Django's widgets and the reason why we're doing that is because widgets are what allow us to change the way the form looks so we're going to look for Django form widgets in their documentation which you can find just by searching on Google and now if we scroll down a little bit we can see here all the types of widgets on the side here so we get text input email input text area etc so there's a lot of different inputs here and you can actually select multiple ones well different ones for whichever field you've specified on the form so for example inside the character field what we want to do is specify the widget as a text input so here we say the widget is forms dot text input and although this will not change the styling of a character field because that's what a character field is it is a text input so if we go back and actually refresh this nothing changed it's the same field this is actually what is happening this text input here which you can find over there so if we click that text input it shows you all of the fields and it's the same thing as rendering an input tag so that's actually what these widgets are doing it's displaying HTML so let's go back all the way to the top and let's look for the text area and that is actually what we want for the widget for the content so here we specify the widget as forms dot text area and now if we refresh this now we can see that the content field has expanded because now it's not a text input it's a text area and so we can do the same for all of these fields we can specify a widget which will make it look a little bit different so let's go and look for one for the date time field so here we can look 
and we see a split date time field, a select date time field, and a whole bunch of other ones, date input, date time input. So let's maybe take the select date widget. And so here we would specify the widget as a forms.selectDate widget. And now if we refresh that, now we can see we get this kind of form for the dates, which is a lot better than having to type in a date. So basically what we can do is we can mess around with the widgets to see when something looks good or when something doesn't. So for the multiple choice fields, we're going to specify two different types of widgets for each one because we can. So here we'll say that the widget for the author is the forms.select multiple. And then the widget for the editors we'll say is the checkbox select multiple. So two different widgets, but the same kind of field. And now if we refresh it, now you can see author, this is, there's obviously no data coming through, so that's why we can't select anything. And then editor, there's no data coming through, so we can't select anything either. But now we'll actually sort that out in a second. The last one is the draft. So here we'll specify the widget as a checkbox input. And again, play around with all these widgets to see which ones look best for you. So that is exactly the same one. It's just this little box. So what I'm going to do to finish off the forms is I'm just going to add in some extra fields to our widgets. So for example, the text input widget, if we just give ourselves some space here, we can add a field called attributes or short for attributes. And here we can add in the placeholder attribute which if you know HTML would know that that's something you can add in an input. Then we can just add give a title as the input placeholder. And then we can do the same thing for content. We can give its attributes as the following. So we can specify the placeholder as add some content. We can specify the rows and so on. Then we won't add anything for the publish date field. That's already as good as it'll get. And then inside the author and editor, I'm just going to add choices as a field as well. Lastly, for the form, we need an init method so that we can update the choices for each of the author and the editor fields. And so one way we can do that is by specifying this init method on the class. And that's a special method, which once we call super and the init of that super, then that basically allows us to edit the fields of, or edit the choices of the fields uh, on our class. So here we're calling self.fields and then grabbing the author field and declaring the choices of that author field as a list of tuples. So name, common name for the name in the unique authors and unique authors is just the values list of all the author objects. So basically, all the different types of objects that we get and then the exact same thing for editors and then inside our views.py we then just handle the submitting of the actual form so here we're just saying if the request method is the post method then we fill the, for the post form with that actual request post we check if the form is valid and then we create a post object where we're passing in the author and the editor and the publish date and then we're just adding on the last three fields here, title, content, and draft. And the way that we're getting those values is from the cleaned data of the form. So we can call form.cleaneddata.get and then the name of the actual field that is here on the form. So when we do that, then we're just filtering the object to actually get an instance of the author object and an instance of the edit object and then the rest is just grabbing the form to clean data. Then we just save it and pass in an empty form if it's a GET request. And that concludes the view. So if we go back inside here and refresh it, then this is what the form actually looks like. And if we were to just submit some stuff, so we'll just say a demo and we'll add some content again, and we'll just change the values on the form. And if we submit it, then we can see it successfully submits and we can check it in the admin if we want to, to as well.
So that concludes this video. If you enjoyed it, please give us a like down below and subscribe for more. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one.